Hello everyone and welcome back. In a recent video, I went through a demo of web scraping. We scraped some information about universities and their athletic departments, their football teams, and their basketball teams in terms of their Twitter usernames and commonly used hashtags. In this video, I want to use a particular username, Twitter username, ZagMBB, to make a request to the Twitter API to get some additional Twitter information about the account that has this username. You can use any account username that you want, but if you don't have one in mind, you can use this one. Just note that usernames on Twitter can change. So even though ZagMBB is a valid Twitter username right now, they could change it to something else, and then this may not be valid in the future. If that is to happen, then just grab a different username or find out what the updated one for Gonzaga is. So if I copy this ZagMBB username, and I go to twitter.com and paste it after the slash, then I can see the Gonzaga men's basketball Twitter page. You can see here that there's a display name, a username, there's a description, there's a place, there's a link, there's a creation date, when was this account made, June 2012, and then some public metrics like the number of following and followers, we can use the Twitter API to get all this information programmatically, which you might be like, well, why do we need to use the Twitter API to do that? You can see it right here. Well, imagine you wanted this information for, say, thousands of Twitter accounts. You wouldn't want to do that manually. You'd want to write a script that will grab it for you quickly and automatically. So that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing you'll need to do is go to developer.twitter.com. And if you don't already have a Twitter account, make one and then sign in. Once you're signed in, you'll be prompted to make a project and an app. Once you've made a project and an app, then you'll be able to generate a bearer token. The bearer token is what you will need in order to follow along with the demo here. So once you've made a project and you've made an app, and then you've made a bearer token for that app, you'll wanna copy that bearer token to your clipboard because we're gonna head over to VS Code or whatever your favorite development environment is, and we're gonna paste that into a file. We'll make sure that that file is ignored by Git so our bearer token doesn't accidentally end up in a public GitHub repository because this is unique to your account, your project, your app, and any use of it will count towards your API usage quotas. So let's head back to our development environment, and we're going to make a file called twitterkeys.json. And in here, we are going to have JSON. If you're not familiar with JSON, definitely check out one of my YouTube videos where I go over the basics of JSON, what it's used for, how to read it, how to write it, how to load it. So let's make an attribute called bear token. And the value for this attribute or this key will be what's on your clipboard. So paste your bear token here. I'm going to pause the video, paste mine, and then head back over to main.py so that it doesn't get recorded in this video. Great, now let's make a git ignore file and add twitterkeys.json to make sure that this file with our bearer token, like I said, doesn't end up in a public GitHub repo. Great, so now let's head over to main.py and what we wanna do is open up this twitterkeys.json file. So I'll use a simple with statement in order to do this. So with open twitterkeys.json as in file, then we'll use the JSON library. It's a standard built-in Python package in order to load the contents of this file into a JSON object, which is really just a dictionary. 
So let's import JSON. All right, now we can grab our bearer token from the JSON object using the key that we made, which was bearer token. And now we should be able to use this token to authenticate with the Twitter API. So now it's time to talk about the Twitter API. What we want to do is use a Twitter API endpoint where we can look up a user by username. You can see I already have the documentation pulled up for the one that we're going to use for our introduction to the Twitter API. I'll kind of scroll through this and just mention a few things. So first off, we have to provide a username. There are some additional parameters that we can provide, including expansions, tweet fields, and user fields. We are not going to grab a bunch of information, but I will show you how to use one of these so that you know how you can use the API. We'll use the user fields. We'll at least grab created at and description and public metrics. So created at should give us that June 2012 date. Description should give us what's currently written as the description on the page for the account. And then the public metrics should be information like what we see here, number of followers and following. Now we can use one of these examples or we can write our own requests using the request library or URL lib or something similar. But I'm going to show you an even easier way, which is using TweetPy. So TweetPy is an easy to use Python library for accessing the Twitter API. It essentially is an object oriented programming OOP wrapper for all of these endpoints that we can install with pip and use quite easily in our code. So here's the documentation for TweetPy. And in particular, there's a client class and it has a get user method where we can pass in an ID or a username. Well, we have a username. We don't have an ID. This ID would be the unique ID of this account in the Twitter database. So for example, if let's say the Gonzaga men's basketball team were to change their username from like Zag MBB to like Zag B-Ball or something, their username would change, but their ID would still be unique. And it's always good to use that ID so that it's not ambiguous about which team you're trying to access. So we're going to use the user username to get this ID. And then in the future, we'll be able to just use this ID because like I said, they could change their username, but the ID won't change. All right, so we'll make a client object and then we'll call this get user passing in username and user fields so we can get those extra, like I said, created at public metrics, description, etc. And then this is going to return a response object and I'll show you how to parse out the information that you want from the response object. All right, so let's get started. We'll need to pip install TweetPy. So if you haven't done that already, you should do so now. And then we can come up to the top of our module here and import TweetPy. Once we've imported TweetPy, then we should be able to make a TweetPy client object. TweetPy.client, and there's a few different ways that we can authenticate. We have a bear token, so we'll use bear token is assigned token for our keyword argument. Now this client object should be accessible outside of the with statement, and we can use it to call that get user method to get the information we want about the account with the username Zag MBB. So let's get that Zag username. So that's going to be df.lock. Gonzaga, and then we want the men's basketball team. And I want to make sure that we strip off that at sign. The Twitter API doesn't want it in part of the username. So when I print this out, I should see just Zag MBB with no at sign in front of the Zag MBB. Perfect. 
So I think we are good to go. So let's call a function that we're going to write. I'll call it fetch user account info. And I'm going to pass in that client object that we just made and our Zag username. I'm going to have this return a panda series with all of the key value pairs that we extract from the response we get from the API. And I'll print that out so we can see it. Okay, now it's time to write this function. All right, so we've got our client, it's a TweetPy client object, and we've got our username, it's a string. So we're gonna use that client to call the get user function. Okay, we're looking at the get user function documentation here. So we'll pass in the username keyword argument and then the user fields, the extra information we want about the user. So we'll do username is assigned username and user fields. And we can choose from that list that we saw on the Twitter API documentation. Let's do created at description and public metrics. And make sure that you spell these correctly, match the casing and use the underscore appropriately. All right, let's try this and see if we can get a response back and we'll print out the type of the payload, the data in that response. All right, it says class capital U user. So this is an object of this type. And we can go to the documentation and we can look up and see information about that object. So under models, user, here's the tweepy.user. The user object contains Twitter user account metadata describing the reference user. It's primary object return in the user's lookup endpoint, which is what we did. When requesting additional user fields on this endpoint, simply use the fields parameter user fields, which is what we did. Awesome. So we should be able to grab the ID, the name, the username, created at description, etc. So let's see all that we have available to us. All right, so we have ID, name, and username. This is at least what's showing with the keys view, but we know there's gonna be some additional keys we can use because we added the user fields. So we should be able to grab the created at description and public metrics. So let's make a dictionary to store all of these key value pairs. So we'll grab the ID, we'll grab the username, You can also grab the name if you want. This is the display name or the screen name. I'm going to grab the created at, which should be there because of my user fields when I made my request. And I'm going to grab description, same thing. So it's extra information that we asked for. And then the public metrics gets returned as a dictionary. So essentially it would be like the key public me metrics maps to a dictionary of all the public metrics. So I'm just going to expand or concatenate this dictionary to my values dictionary that I'm making right now with an update call. So user dot public metrics. This should extend the dictionary with all these key value pairs. And then I'm gonna make a series from this dictionary that I just constructed and return it. And if all goes well, we should be able to see all of the information that we wanted from that Twitter account. All right, let's make this nice and big. All right, so the output starts right here. So user ID, so this is the unique user ID for this user. Remember, this doesn't change over time. The username might change, but this won't. Uh, created at, so the exact date time 
June 8th, 2012. And we have hour, minute, second. So this is even more information than we could see on the web page here. It just said June 12th. We've got a date and a time. Here's the description. Home of Gonzaga men's basketball, basketball emoji, 25 straight March Madness appearances. Looks like it matches the description on the page. And then here's what we get for public metrics. We get followers count, following count, tweet count, and listed count. So a little bit more information here than we originally pointed out, but these numbers should match. Let's at least check 173. Yep, 173. Right here looks good. Uh, at the top here, we can see 9,379 tweets, and that does match what we see for the tweet count that we get here. So it looks like everything worked. You can and should try this with different usernames. And if you want to go above beyond and practice with the Twitter API and or with TweetPy, you should try doing this again using the unique user ID instead of using the username. It should be a simple change of our client get user call. Remember, take a look at the documentation. It'll describe everything you need to know about how to use this method. And another challenge could be to try doing this without using TweetPy, uh, make a standard request to the endpoint uh, get user by username that I showed earlier using something like the request library. All right, that's it for this video, introducing how to use the Twitter API. I'll be using the Twitter API in future videos. So stay tuned if you wanna see more examples of how to use the API for data science projects. Thanks everyone.